what is a meta puzzle? What is a puzzle hunt meta puzzle? Quite simply, it is an, a puzzle that uses answers from previous puzzles. There are a lot of other things that can be attached to a meta puzzle, but in its purest form, that's what it is. It usually comes later in the round and every puzzle that you solve will contribute data to your meta puzzle. Optionally, depending on your hunt constructors, it will give closure to a particular round you may be working on. It is thematic, highly thematic. You have puzzles in a wave. They're all tied together, hopefully. Um, and those will thematically fit into the meta puzzle. And often, sometimes that theme will be a clue as to what to do. And you'll see that in a second. We're going to do an example. Uh, it will conclude or advance the story and structure of the hunt, kind of milestone moments. And they often have delayed release structure. So you won't get your meta puzzles right away. You may have to solve a couple of theater puzzles uh, to get your meta, or maybe you get the meta right up front. It's not guaranteed either way. And finally, uh, it is the most fun hunt moments often where you get that meta, you conclude around and it releases a lot of endorphins. Uh, a good analogy I like to think is that it's kind of like a boss battle of the puzzle hunts because you do all of your grunt work doing all the collecting all the resources and then you defeat the boss and move on. Maybe you haven't gotten all the crates. You did not open all the crates, but you got enough to defeat the boss. And that's sort of the main goal to attack a hunt in its overall structure. So what makes a meta puzzle different? Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, the primary one is that your data trickles in over time. You don't have all of your information all at once. Uh, unless you didn't look at the meta at all until you solved all your feeder puzzles, but that's pretty rare. So you've got data trickling in over time. You also have incomplete knowledge. You might not even have some of the information you need right away, and you're certainly not going to have all of your answers right away. So as a result, there's a higher risk reward factor when deciding you're going to tackle a meta puzzle. And just so you know, when uh, most commonly in mystery hunts, you will be very aware that a puzzle is a meta puzzle. It will have a visual significance greater than the other puzzles uh, and so forth. Hunt constructors can do things differently, but you're usually pretty aware when you see a meta puzzle. Uh, so back to the risk reward thing real quick. Um, you're often looking at a meta and you don't know if you have three of the eight answers or three of the 20 answers. So solving metas is kind of a love-hate thing where it's very important and people love it, but often you're, you're just spinning your wheels because you really can't proceed. So it, there is a higher risk reward. You may devote two hours staring at a bunch of answers uh, with not much to pay off for. Okay, next slide. Um, there are two types, there's tons of different types of meta puzzles, but they're generally classified into two types. A pure meta only uses the answers themselves and nothing else. And people who think puzzles are more of an art form than an activity uh, tend to focus on the pure meta stuff where it's simply a list of words. How do I get an answer out of this? Weiwa talked about ordering and extracting in his ISIS puzzle. Um, a pure meta will have both of those built in just on the words themselves. So a very simple pure meta might be each of our answer words is a planet in our solar system scrambled with a letter change, for example. And right there, you have your extraction. Maybe the letter that's been changed is going to make your message, your answer message, and you order the planets how they appear in our solar system. So it's got internal sort order and internal extraction. Um, and pure metas are usually all or nothing in terms of having your aha moment. You're staring at it, you're staring at it, boom, you figure it out. And you're usually, if you have enough of the answers, going to solve it right away. There's not a lot of progress made where you're sort of filling in data here and there. The opposite of that are shell metas. You have answers plus extra stuff. It could be a grid, it could be blanks, it could be artwork, all sorts of different things. Uh, and sometimes even, and we'll see an example, the shell can be on the puzzles themselves. So if you aren't paying attention and looking, maybe there's a label on the title of a puzzle or a graphic that isn't there on the other rounds. Sometimes that's really important. And you can usually make a little bit more gradual progress on a shell because there's other stuff to do and organize and figure out what might be going on. So we're gonna look at a puzzle, a meta puzzle from uh, the Broadway musical parody, Mystery Hunt, the 2012 Mystery Hunt. This was called A Circus Line. And we're not gonna go into as detailed of a solving experience as Weiwa did, but I'm gonna show you how a typical meta puzzle might work. So this was from the round A Circus Line, which was a parody of a chorus line. Um, and these were the answers that came out of that round. So you've got bookworm, 
Cocoon, co-sponsors, and so on. Um, and we're not gonna, as I said, go too deep in it, but about half the answers have an interesting feature. So I'll see if someone wants to point that out in chat here. Yep, immediately, triple O from Yuru. Yuru. Uh, that's right, half of the answers have three O's in them. That's because this is a three ring circus. And I talked about where the theme of the round helps you solve the meta puzzle. This is a great example where if you're thinking three ring circus, oh, these O's have to be important. And another thing you need to uh, sort of get in the habit of is looking for patterns in your answer words, such as the lengths of your words. So one thing you might notice is, oh, there's a lot of different lengths. First of all, let's go ahead and group our answers into uh, ones with O's and one without. And another pro tip is to put your font in a monospaced font so that every letter can be in its own column and no letter is more important than other letters. So now we have our answers grouped into two different groups. And someone might notice that the answer lengths match, yes. So in our red group, we have unique answer links. And in our black group, we have unique answer links. So let's go ahead and sort those two groups. And then Richard said, answers pair up in length. That's a great observation. So now we can pair up Cocoon with Medley, Octopod with Pinhead, and so on. And then the final step is, feel free to point it out in chat what you think we do here. Yes, the letters in the place of the O's, Ewan says, uh, and cocoon, where the O's are, the corresponding letters are ELE and medley, PHA and pinhead, and so on, to get us the answer phrase elephant in a tutu, which is very thematic. And that's another example of a great meta where the extraction is uh, thematic to the round, which is a circus, right? And the answer phrase is also kind of funny as well. Often metas will ask you some sort of question, and the answer will be some sort of punny, aha dad joke type reveal uh, when you get that. So that's that's another sort of tradition in the mystery hunt. Okay, um, so what does a shell meta look like? Really the sky's the limit. You can have mazes, you can have a dungeon with letters on the ground, you can simply have crossword clues and so forth. But I wanna show you a couple more, a little bit more elaborate ones. This is from 2015. This is uh, where all of the answers had a food hidden in them and the shell for this round was the food pyramid. And if you extracted that food, you got another word, which if you wrote on these paths, it made a new word. If you only took the letters that matched the type of food corresponding to where it was in the pyramid, you got your answer. Okay, next one. Uh, in the molasses flood 2019 mystery hunt, you had uh, this crazy amount of numbers in this sort of bell shaped pattern. Uh, I looked at this and I had absolutely no idea what to do, but some of the, all the answers had a color in one of the words, I believe. And if someone realized that this shape was the chromaticity scale, um, you could then match your answers to get X, Y values, which then helped you with the extraction on that. That was way beyond my understanding. Uh, and then the final meta I wanna show is Inside Out had a sci-fi round in 2018. And this was a board cube. And one of the phrases that uh, the Borg are very familiar with is resistance is futile. Well, each answer, the initial letters made country codes. And if you took the flags of those country codes with the phrase resistance is futile, you realize these flags all have three stripes and these are corresponding to resistance codes, which gives you resistance. You can then map out an entire circuit connecting answers to each other to finally extract I won't even go into how that was done, uh, again, far beyond my understanding. So those are three really, really wacky ones, very different from the pure meta of here's 10 words, what do you do next? Uh, and these, yes, as someone put it, these are very convoluted and complex and are often much, much later in the round, just where it's like, let's do some really wacky stuff for the top teams. Okay, final thing is we're gonna show you a kind of a hybrid between a pure and a shell meta which was one we wrote for our mystery hunt last year in Penny Park. Uh, this was the Spaceopolis round. And the next couple of slides show you what the, the puzzles looked like. So we had the Mars Rover puzzle, and we had the Gallery of Tomorrow puzzle, and one more. We had the Creatures from Outer Space puzzle. Go on back to the uh, next slide, there we go. So in Spaceopolis, the rocket ship was the meta at the center. So next slide will show you 
what our answer words look like. Or sorry, this is the flavor text. Uh, records show that Spaceopolis keeps crashing. If you can figure out where it is, uh, one of the Spaceopolis rides. If you can figure out where it is, you should be able to determine which part we need to fix. Okay, that was the flavor text you got. These were your answer words. One thing I want to uh, point out as a little bit of a pro tip when trying to solve a meta, think about are your answer words used for the letters themselves or could they possibly be cluing something else? Are they using them for the sense of the word? And that's, that's a really important thing to think about. And if you look at these, these feel like maybe they're, they're for the meaning of the words. Hints that it's for the letters, you've got some really wacky Scrabble tile values, you've got some weird letter patterns and stuff like that. So, so that's something to be thinking about on this. Now, you might think that this was unsolvable. You might stare at those answers and have no idea what to do, but an observant teammate might point out, now you can go to the next one, that there's these headers on each of the puzzles that are different. You've got a comet and you've got stars. So then you might think, oh, well, let's sort our answers from how the comet goes from left to right across the sky. When you do that, you get this answer. And then the next step might be to take the stars of each header and index or count into the answer words. That gives you the phrase Hegu Crater. So you're like, we solved it and we type in Hegu Crater. And unfortunately, no, that is not correct because that is a clue as to what to do next. Well, where to look next? Let's go back to the flavor text. Records show. And if you can figure out where it is, well, the Hegu crater, if you can figure out where it is, it's on the dark side of the moon. So that's a little bit of a hint. And records is another hint that maybe look at the classic Pink Floyd album, Dark Side of the Moon. Hopefully most of you know or have heard of that album. So when you do that, you find that each one of these answer words or phrases is synonymous with the 10 tracks on Dark Side of the Moon, which then if you sort those tracks in the order they appear on the album, you get this. And then if you index by taking the first letter of the first word, the second letter of the sex word, second word, and so on, this is called diagonalizing, you will get the answer prism break, which is the part of the ride that needed to be fixed. So real quick, do we have any questions on meta puzzles? What is uh, a back solve? Yeah. So a back when uh, what happens is that because once you know how a meta works, even you might be able to figure it out even without all the answers. So for example, in that three ring circus example, you might realize, oh, all of these have uh, three rings, but we're actually missing one of the words that had three O's. But since you got the elephant in a tutu message, you're saying, oh, we have this other word and the letters U, T, and U are in these positions. So we need a 10 letter word that has O's in positions five, nine, and 10. So then what kind of word could have those patterns? And you're, there may not be many of them. And if you guess that, you'll end up having, quote, solved the puzzle without knowing at all what the instructions were or how the puzzle worked. So that's what a back solve is. Kelly asks, is there a good place to see prior hunts with previous solves so that you can check your answers or get help if you get stuck? And it looks like somebody's answered them. Yeah, all right. there are uh, all the archives on the Mystery Hunter on uh, MIT's page, the Mystery Hunt page. Um, and I believe, I'm not sure if it's still the case, the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea had it where you could register a team and play all the way through. Uh, from the start with unlocks. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but uh, some of the hunts uh, are still solvable for sure. Here's a question from Matt Jackson. Uh, do you ever design a really cool puzzle only to realize the constraints on it from metas slash meta metas make it unusable or require big alterations? Um, I'd say that we've both written our fair share of unusable puzzles. <laughs> Wouldn't you say so? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, there is that still that one really beautiful, uh, you know, win winter wonderland Penny Park themed puzzle that I wrote that ended up not going anywhere, even having gone through three iterations. So that meta puzzle, hopefully the idea can be resurrected sometime. And you had that wonderful puzzle that ended up be getting demoted to be a normal puzzle over in the over in the Wild West round. I, I think it's I like to think it was promoted, honestly. You know, really. I yeah, mean, it, it, did, it did improve a lot more once you are freed of the constraint of it needing to be a meta puzzle. That is true. 